Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Sela0420. Just throwing a quick video update on what's going down with me and my grow. Um, still week three. A um, couple of days after I threw up this last video that I had. Uh, I, I told you in the last video that I had contracted uh, root aphids from a local dispensary of mine that I, uh, in my city um, that I picked up from. And uh, yeah, I mean, fuck. You know, this shit sucks. I'm going through it. Don't like bugs. Usually do a you know a pretty good uh, pretty good with the preventative maintenance and uh, you know maintaining my plants and you know keeping pest free and uh, disease free uh, you know clones and and moms and stuff. And this one, this is a really bad one, man. I can tell you right now, at this point in time, I'd probably rather fucking have mites. You know, at least I got some uh, some flora mite that uh, you know I can use on them, and you know that's really effective against mites. Um, I would like to keep everything that I do organic, but, uh, sometimes you just gotta battle these things with these, uh, you know, these bugs, these pests, you gotta battle them with something harder than, uh, your conventional methods of, uh, organic pesticides. But, uh, I finally got a bottle of, uh, this stuff right here. This stuff is called Evergreen. And if you look at the label, it's, uh, Perithium. It's a botanical insecticide. It's 5%. Uh, Perithium. It's, uh, Perithium, uh, concentrate. Ordered it online from a company called uh, Do My Own Pest Control. Um, this bottle cost me, I think, fifty-six dollars plus uh, it was free shipping. And uh, from what I can tell, this shit fucking works. Um, I used a five-gallon water jug and I mixed in thirty mils or one ounce of uh, of this into uh, the water. I pH the water before I added it, and I pH it down to six. The, the the label does say the pH of water between 6, 5, and 7 because I guess uh, it, it degrades the, uh, the the level of perithium. But, I mean, if you're using it immediately, you shouldn't have any problems with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I sprayed the plants down. Um, I sprayed these four down, I should say. As you can see, I got these four in here, but these four over here are out. I'm uh, getting ready to do them next. Um, I'm going to alternate between these four and these four um, doing my uh, soil drench and uh, foliar spray. Um, to kind of try to combat this, and if, at least if I can't eradicate them, at least keep them under control, keep them at bay. Um, you know, I just want to touch on a few things. Um, well, first, let me show you this real quick. Uh, to show you that this stuff is really working, as you can see right there, there's two of those uh, little fucking bastards right there dead on the leaves. Um, so it does kill, it does work. Um, but yeah, you can see another one back there. Oh, shit. There's one right there, I can't really get on focus. There's that. Yeah, right there. There's one dead right there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the key to the key to pest management is to, you know, take care of this shit immediately. Um, it took me six days to get this bottle, so uh, you know, they definitely uh there are a lot more than there were, you know, say a week ago. Um I, it's evident with this plant right here, the Skywalker. This thing is taking the brunt of the shit. Um, I actually noticed the the aphids in this pot first before I. Well, no, I take that back. I noticed them in a clone that I had just kind of sitting around. <coughs> um, I was gonna put, debate on whether or not I wanted to turn into a mom or not. But um, yeah, I mean, preventative maintenance is uh, it's key to successful harvests and key to successful growing. Um, there's things you need to do before. Uh, you know, before you enter, you know, new plants in your grow area, and uh, I did that, but I didn't do a very good job of it. I basically sprayed my plants down with uh, some fluoromite because that's one of the key things I always do, because mites are a bitch, and I'm starting to really think that maybe root aphids might be the bigger bitch. But um, I didn't have any Azimax or anything. I usually use Azimax to to foliar spray and you know, kind of keep anything that's uh, you know, maybe. It, on the foliage, or you know, I'll, I'll dip the uh, the rooted clones, and you know, if they're in rock wool or rocker rooters or whatever, um, and some kind of a Azimax mix. And uh, yeah, I didn't do that this time, and now I'm paying for it. So I just want to let you guys know, especially you guys who are new to growing, that uh, it's key to look at your plants. It's key to you know, it's it's you want to make sure you you spend some time in your garden. And, uh, you know, look your leaves over, flip them over, flip a couple over, take the plant, put it up high, look underneath from, from the underside. That way you can see if you can see anything, you know, any pests kind of like just lingering on the leaves because they'll be there. They're not going anywhere, especially if you, you know, if you're, you know, not checking your plants on a daily basis. 
But uh, another good thing to do is, you know, just foil spray, you know, with some kind of, uh, you know, organic pesticide. I use uh, Azimax, you know, it's a really good product. But I think this is a, uh, the active ingredient in this is a little bit less than what uh, Azitrol has. I think Azitrol is actually uh, like 1.5 or something like that, or maybe in 2.5 2 or something like that. But the uh, Azimax seems to work really well too. And it's, uh, you know, it's organic. And uh, you know, I definitely, I definitely like having this in my, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my closet with, uh, with the rest of my nutrients and products that I use in my plants on a daily or weekly basis. But um, yeah, just uh, you know, preventative maintenance. You get any clones from dispensaries or a friend or something like that. You know, just it, they may not have pests, or they may may not know that they have pests. But you want to double check that. It, it's key to to having a successful harvest. Um, so yeah, basically what the, the gist of this is that this uh, perithium is, uh, I'm going to do five consecutive uh, soil drenches or, you know, cocoa drenches with it, and uh, I'm going to alternate between these two, these four plants and the other four plants that are in the bathroom right now, and just try to fucking eradicate these fuckers. I got to make sure that I, I have, you know, a few moms that I want to try to save, but I'm not really sure because they're looking pretty bleak. I'll probably throw another video up with those in there because they're really, really horrible looking. But, um, I did have two, uh, two extra Ghost OG clones. I'm praying to God that I can save my purple Kush mom. But, you know, I mean, hey, it's, it's been a while since I've gotten any new genetics and I picked these up and, you know, I'm hoping these, you know, I got a couple bubble cuts, uh, platinum bubble cuts, uh, still in my tub, but they're looking pretty bleak and, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to save those, but all I want to say to you guys is just be preventative, you know, be, uh, you know, active in your uh, your gardens other than just you know automating your systems because that's what kind of probably got me you know a little bit lazy is you know I just turn the fucking water pump on and you know let the water pump do the work for the watering and you know I don't have to fucking worry about you know being in there 24 7 you know because growing can take up a lot of time a lot of your time just if you're working a full-time job and then you gotta come home and deal with this shit so but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just all about preventative. Be, be active in your garden. Uh, you know, take some time. Spend some time with each one of your plants. You know, even if it's five or ten minutes, take them out. Look at them. Look under the leaves, you know. Spray them down with something, you know. Make sure that, that they're, uh, they're disease and pest free because if you want to get bountiful harvests off the, the plants you're growing, you got to make sure that they don't have any stress because stress slows the plant's growth. Um, it'll actually inhibit its ability to actually finish off properly. And uh, you may think, oh yeah, I ran nine weeks, it should be done. And you actually only maybe, your plants only maybe mature six or seven weeks and has a couple more weeks to go, which is not good. You don't want that. You want the, the plant to be able to be productive throughout the entire cycle. So you're saving up money, you know, with running your lights. Um, you want to have your stuff ready to go for the next round. You want to have your clones taken and rooted and everything before, two weeks before you're actually, uh, you're actually getting ready to harvest. That way, when you get ready to harvest, you can just come in, harvest, chop your plants down, hang them up to dry, clean out your area. Um, that's another thing you want to make sure you're going to do is to take, you know, if you got a tent, take your tent apart. You know, at least wipe down your, you know, your the, the walls and, the, you know, take the floor out. If you have a liner on the floor, take the floor out, take it and vacuum it. Because I see these fuckers running around on the sides of my tent, and I, you know, I see them on this uh this wooden board right here they were on the back of that um you know running around and I'm, I'm sure when this harvest is over i'm either gonna do one of two things i'm either just gonna throw everything away and just kind of let this you know let this sit for about a month and just you know hope that everything dies off and you know because if it has nothing to feed on they have nothing to feed on they're eventually going to go away um, or I might try to do maybe a Corinthian bomb in the tents and, you know, see if I can get rid of them that way. But I'm pretty happy with this new product that I'm using. It seems like it's definitely working. It's just going to be, uh, you, you just got to be vigilant with this kind of shit. And, uh, that way you can get rid of them. And, uh, you know, hopefully you'll never get them again. Hopefully you'll never get them like me. Um, this is one of the first pests that I've ever had growing in, you know, the eight seven eight years that I've been growing and they got out of control really quick so you know I, I'm vigilant on this and I'm trying to make sure this shit gets you know I get rid of this shit so but uh yeah I just want to throw this quick video up and uh let you know about this new product like I said it's called Evergreen it's five percent prithium um you can order it online from do my own pest control.com 
free shipping I think on anything over 50 bucks and you know they have a lot of good stuff over there you know they, you can get the Perithian bombs yeah if you're in California like me you can't order this shit you can't or I mean you can't buy this shit in the stores you have to order it online so California doesn't allow Perithium in a in a state so you know, or at least for not for retail sale. So you can do it commercially, but I think you can't do it just for retail for the, the you know the hobbyist or the you know the pot grower, I should say. Uh, you'd have to be commercially you know commercially licensed to uh, to obtain this product and actually be able to use it. So, anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get up off this, and uh, I'll go ahead and let you guys know the progress as this come along as this comes along, and uh, you know hopefully I can uh, recommend a good product for you guys to use if you ever have any pests. And this, this, this stuff works for a lot of different pests. It's got a really long list of pest control. Um, it's just all about identifying um, identifying the pest and uh, you know and acting upon it and you know mixing the right amounts of nutri uh, the right amounts of uh, insecticide with the water that you need to uh, to mix up to to attack the uh, and kill the uh, the target pest. Um, Perithium, I from what I understand, works in a, a different way than what like say something like Azimax. Perithium, from what I understand, basically attacks the nervous system of the insect, and uh, it's a pretty quick death for them, like from what I can tell. I mean, I I started seeing dead ones, you know, maybe 30 minutes after I had fully sprayed it. Um, they were all over the counters and shit, and they were, you know, kind of flying away and stuff. So, uh, Azimax has a tendency to work where it basically, uh, if I remember correctly, it basically it keeps the the bug from feeding, which is a good thing because you want them to stop feeding on your plants. Um, and then I guess it keeps them from mulching or growing so they can't go through their finished or life cycle. And if you have bugs that can't sexually mature, they can't sexually reproduce. So aphids are a totally different story though. They're asexual and they can lay three to four eggs a day. No problem. Three to four eggs a day from a hundred, you know, times seven. You do the math on that shit. It's a fucking lot of them. And they will fucking infest your garden very, very quickly. So, you know, check your plants. That's all I got to say. Anyway, Sealy0421, I'm out. Peace.